So you set up your store, you got a few listings up, and boom, your account has been banned with seemingly no reason why. Or maybe you didn't even get through the sign-up process. Etsy will give you a bunch of unbelievable reasons of why you got banned. Maybe you added a suspicious credit card. Maybe you logged in from a suspicious location. Or maybe you don't know what you did, but the thing you do know is you didn't do anything wrong. So if you've been wrongfully banned or rightfully, it doesn't matter. Here's exactly how to open up a new Etsy shop without getting banned during the first couple days. And somewhere in this video, I'll show you how to do a digital warm up that further increases your chances of not being banned on the platform. So make sure you stay tuned and watch the whole thing. There's going to be a lot of specifics to this video. So here's exactly what you're going to need to get started. Now, without further ado, let's hop into the first step, multi-login. What is multi-login? Multi-login is something called an anti-detect browser, which allows you to manage and simulate multiple computers with multiple different data points that Etsy monitors, but multi-login makes them unique. And so Etsy thinks you're logging in from a new location on a new computer with every profile you have on multi-login. So basically it will allow you to start fresh and there's other softwares that do this, but multi-login is by far the best in the industry. And by using the other softwares, you could be putting yourself at risk, which I've seen before, IP addresses getting leaked, MAC addresses getting leaked and so on. So multi-login is really the one that I highly recommend and I can't recommend any other software. And by the way, you can also use this code when signing up to get 50% off. So pause the video right now, download multi-login and then come back for step two. Step two, residential proxies. Just to be clear, there's a bunch of nuances involved with proxies. Are they static or rotating? Are they mobile? Are they residential? Are they SOX 5 or HTTP? There's a ton of different questions that go along with this. I'm going to redact all of that information and just tell you simply what you need. You need a static residential proxy that is SOX 5 and it's from OxyLabs. OxyLabs is by far the best provider I've seen. Again, they're not cheap, but they are the best provider I've seen. Now let's jump into my computer and I'll show you exactly which plan to choose and how to get it set up with multi-login. And by the way, there's a more budget-friendly option also listed down below if that's something you guys are interested in. Okay, so we're on the OxyLabs website. You're gonna go ahead, hit proxies and then residential proxies. And then we'll, you know, just go ahead, buy at pay per gigabyte, and then you can check out here. Once we're at the dashboard, go to the left-hand side and click on endpoint generator. Make sure your username and password are filled in. And then we can then choose the location. So this video is dedicated for US. So click United States of America is the country and any state you want or any city you want. And then here we'll go ahead and click sticky and put that to 30. Now we have our information here, which I can take and copy, but let's first go into multi-login, create a new profile. And this one will just be, you know, test one. You can leave everything as is, depending if you're on Mac or Windows, you can choose that. Uh, you, can, you can keep this on mimic here. And we'll go ahead and hit edit proxy settings and put this on HTTP. Now we'll go ahead and grab this username right here. Boom. Back to multi-login. <clears throat> Excuse me, this goes here. And then you can input your password. And then on the back end, we'll go ahead and grab the IP which is pr.oxylabs.io. And then the port is 7777. Check proxy. Awesome, it passed and that is the exact location that I choose. Now we can go ahead and launch this just to make sure everything is a-okay. And that's exactly how you do it. US, North America, everything is looking perfect there. So that's how you set up a proxy from OxyLabs into multi-login. All proxy providers really work the same way. Once you learn how to do this once, you can do it on every platform. Now let's move on to the next.
Amazing, now you've completed step two, let's move on to step three. Warming cookies. So the philosophy behind this is Etsy can detect the cookies or data that your browser has accumulated by browsing all across the web. And so what multi-login can do is it has something called a cookie bot, which can allow your, your browser profile to run and scrape data from all across the web. And let's say you try and make an Etsy store with a brand new profile with no cookies on it. Etsy's AI will assign a risk score that's very high to that profile because it has no data. And they're seeing that you've done nothing on the internet and only came to the Etsy website to create an account, which is a little bit of a red flag. And we wanna simulate as much human activity as possible. So we're gonna use the cookie bot within multi-login to create our accounts and to properly warm our accounts. So let's hop right into multi-login and I'll show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so you're in multi-login and wanna know how to warm cookies or use the cookie bot. So this is how it works. You go over here, click run cookie bot, and then you can give it links and we'll go ahead and extend this to 300 per link. And then I just asked ChatGPT, you know, what are the 30 most popular websites in the US? So I will also drop this list below, but I'll go ahead and take this list. We'll scroll down, select everything, copy, and then paste, and click run. Now it's running, it's gonna visit those websites. It should launch the profile right there. It's gonna visit those websites, click around, and build the cookies for this profile. So there you go, that's exactly how to use the cookie bot. Let's move on to the next. Identity slash LLC. So if you've already been banned on Etsy, simply simulating a new computer with a new IP address with the new cookies is not enough. Okay, there's a fourth part to this equation and that's identity. You will need a friend or family member to open the store for you. And then we will link an LLC, which can be a new LLC or an old LLC that's simply not been used with the platform yet which takes care of the tax situation for their store. Now there's a bunch of ways to get an LLC created from going on state government websites to people that do everything for you. I personally prefer the second option. I use a company called inkfile.com and they got me my LLC within 24 hours at a reasonable price. It was about 150 bucks or so. So I would highly recommend them. And once you get that EIN number, we can then use that to attach it to our Etsy account. But there's a catch. If you created the store from January to March 14th, you can simply attach your LLC to it and there's no problem. All the taxes will go to that LLC for that year, but if you're creating it after and attaching your LLC after those dates, then you'll have to bring the person on to your LLC for tax purposes and then remove them the next year just so everything is fully compliant and legal with the government. Okay, now let's talk about registration, creating the account, and what type of credit card you need. Again, Etsy's AI has a very invasive internal ranking system that likes to profile people. So if you add a credit card from a tier two bank, typically, you know, which less fortunate people have or people that don't really have a solid monetary foundation, such as online banks, they will instantly ban your account. Even tier two banks like Lily.co or Wise, I've seen them instantly ban accounts for using these. And this has changed recently. Etsy started profiling harder than ever before. And so the only thing that you can do is add credit cards from tier one banks. Tier one banks typically have brick and mortar locations in the US and names of these banks are PNC Bank, Chase, Wells Fargo, Citibank, but I've also seen American Express work extremely well too. However, if you're looking for a quick solution, I would highly recommend the Apple card because it's virtual. You can get it on your phone and you can get the number literally within minutes. So it works super well. And you can also change the number at any time and use it for a new store. So I would highly recommend the Apple card and it works flawlessly with Etsy. You can also use the link down below to get 75 bucks when you sign up. I don't get any commissions from that. It's literally just to help you guys, so enjoy. Okay, now you made it to the last step. Let's talk about a phone number. Surprisingly, you actually don't need a new phone number to sign up to Etsy. During the registration process, you can put literally any random phone number in and then select verify by authenticator. And we're gonna be using the Google Authenticator for this. 
which overrides the, the old phone number. It doesn't even exist anymore. And we just use the Google Authenticator app to verify our Etsy stores and use with the two-factor authentication. So that's really what I use and you don't need anything fancy like a new phone number or anything like that. All right, lastly, let's talk about the digital warm-up. So you got your stealth set up, you did everything right, you go to list your first product and it's immediately deactivated by Etsy or maybe your store is even flagged and banned completely. The reason for this is Etsy profiles, again, people that create their first listings and their extremely aggressive AI will deactivate your listing for quote unquote not being handmade enough or maybe it's AI has done a reverse image search and found that product somewhere else on the internet, even if it's your own Shopify website and it bans you. Also, one other thing that happens is as soon as your first sale goes through, your store will be manually reviewed and an Etsy employee will decide for themselves whether or not your store is high risk. One thing we can do to get around that is not create handmade listings at first. One thing we can do is create a digital listing, which is fully compliant with Etsy guidelines. And then we're going to go ahead and buy our own product from our phone and make sure it's on cellular network and use a different credit card than the one that's listed on the account. And so when you buy your own product with a digital listing, you can you know, put anything for the listing. You could take a picture of your desk for all that matters. It's gonna push that sale through the Etsy rep will come manually review it, see it's all compliant, everything will pass, and you should be good to go. Now that's everything, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's gonna help a lot of people out. If it helped you out, all I ask is that you share it with a friend. And if you have any questions regarding any of this, feel free to drop them below, and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.